Welcome. Thank you so much. Good to have you on. Beautiful. Finally, we've been we've been talking about this for quite a while, actually. To say, I'm gonna say almost one and a half year, I think. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. I just arrived from. I just arrived from Tanzania yesterday night. Perfect. <laughs> you're gonna go there. You told me you're gonna go there in probably in what January? In January, hopefully in January. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go and do okay. some beach retreats. What are you gonna be doing there? Hopefully, a silence course uh-huh. uh, where we do silent meditation. Go to the beach and preferably just for men. Uh, so we are still in the making of doing everything. My friend owns a hotel there. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it seems like a good vibe. I was seeing your stories. I was seeing his stories. So I was like, looks definitely like a place I could hang out. <laughs> it's an amazing place. I'm gonna move <laughs> the. Spend a few. That we could spend a few days in. It's an amazing place. I can I can verify that. Um, you say men's retreat. We are going to talk about your story. You you have a pretty crazy story and, <laughs> and crazy sure. past and all that. And I read your book, uh, Gangsters and Gurus. Um, but when you say men's retreat, uh, are we in 2022 finally? At a, it's 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 been that way in the past. I don't know, 20, 30 years, where women are more willing to go inwards when it comes to like improving yourself or going to yoga or meditation, or uh, it might sound like a cliche, but to find your soul. Are we at the place now where men are finally very receptive? I think we are at a place uh, in society where first of all, there is a huge demasculinization, like to take away the masculine from the men. And um, I think more and more guys are feeling that that um, experience of like certain groups in society that are really actively going after the men to not be what what we see as like a male figure. And it's not saying that there is um, anything wrong with being male or female or uh, LBTGQ+. There is none of that. There's none of that involved. But we are seeing a huge suppression of the male. So I think more and more guys are really coming to this thing of like, okay, I want to understand how can I be a man in the society in 2022 without just cutting off my own balls. Um, unless they willingly want to do that, of course, then mm-hmm. that's great. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> Whatever they want to do, perfect. Um, so so what I'm seeing is more and more guys are really coming to this, like they want to go into the wild man to embrace the, we could say like divine masculine figure. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the main things that I have seen is that most of the things that has been available for men has been women's circles made for men. So it's like men who goes into a women's circle, which is like, for me at least personally, it's not super, <laughs> like it doesn't appeal to me, you know? No, I agree so much. I agree <laughs> like so when much. I hang out with my brothers, I want to like chop wood and I want to eat a steak yeah. and I want to, I don't know, like whatever, like crawl a tree, jump in the ocean, uh, do these like more wild things. And um, and that is basically lacking, and there is uh, there is a huge need for it for us to step up. I feel because when the men rises up, of course the women will also automatically rise up stronger. So creating more unified field where there is, like you say, more balance. We have seen the women really exploring, mm-hmm. really embodying their their femininity, which is beautiful and amazing. And it seems like the men we are a little bit left behind on the on the big scale at least. Uh, I know you, I know you're coming from a really good place. And f- for me, like w- w- people in general, but especially males in 2022, we have gotten so out of touch with, we are animals. For sure. We of are course. working, we are working all day in computers. We are staying inside. We are eating food that we are not designed to eat. All these things. But there is this, there is this animal within us and we need to, to we need to embrace it. And I think at least for me, if, if a big part of my journey to heal myself is realizing that like maybe if I want to meditate, for example, I need to go out and run for 30 minutes first. I need to punch a back. I need to sit down and and then I can, then I can actually get something out of the meditation. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's like one of the main problems, right? Like for some people, some people it works, but for most people it doesn't work to just say, okay, let's sit down. We're going to practice mindfulness. And then you sit down for 30 minutes and the, the mind is like full of thoughts. But then the second, like you say, you add in running or you add in ocean swimming or you add in cold tops or you add in like whatever it is you add in that really gets you into the body. Boom. Mm-hmm. And you can sit. 
then you can go in. You talked about addiction, drugs, crimes. We are going to talk about that. I'm yes. going to talk about your yes. story. <laughs> But I want to elaborate a little bit more on the on the masculinity thing we were talking about in the beginning. Because we were talking about Iceland. Do you think you travel all over? I travel all over. My view is that the masculinity is really, really suppressed in Iceland. Would you agree? I would say all over the world. All over the world. But, um, but in the north, like specifically northern Europe, exactly. Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, it's become almost a taboo to be men. Mm -hmm. So yes, for sure. Super suppressed. Where are you coming from? Where is Nikolai coming from? Like what, what was your... The background. The background. <laughs> I mean... To say it how it is, you know, I, I came from the from the gutter, I came from the streets, and um, there will always be part of you that comes from there, you know, like that will never go away, like that part. That's also why I'm happy to just speak about topics openly, because I know like whatever anyone is going to write on a blog or on a, like it doesn't matter for me. I don't really care about their opinion anyway, and I have, mm -hmm. I have already went through all the trials that I could go through. Um, but like I said, I came from a good family. Like we didn't have a lot of money, um, didn't have a lot of, uh, of like material goods, but we had a quite safe, quite safe upbringing. We were in the most rough area of uh, Copenhagen, um, cause it was obviously the cheapest area at the time. And, um, at like eight years old was the first time I really encountered death. So I had an experience where my best friend died, got hit by a car. And again, talking about like structures that doesn't really work in the West, <laughs> going into school with those kind of questions, what happens after you die? What happens to the soul? It wasn't met in that system. Only thing that was met there was like, oh, Nikolai probably has ADHD or ADD. I think it was called something else at the time. I don't know what the English name is, but it was before the ADHD kind of label yeah. became like a famous label. They gave another one similar to that. And um, I remember feeling this feeling of like, fuck you guys, like you clearly don't understand me. I'm obviously super sad. My best friend is being hit by a car, dies on the way to come and meet me. And no one was holding the space for that to talk mm -hmm. about the trauma. No one was answering the questions, what does happen to the soul? Um, so of course I started zoning out, couldn't really focus in the class, was just like, Yeah, not really interested in <laughs> what was going on. Oh, the whole educational system is another, we can have another. <laughs> yeah, we're not oh going to go God. too deep into that. <laughs> <laughs> But I think people know what we mean. <laughs> the ones who knows at least. Um, so it was kind of like this thing of like, okay, either you stay in the school and you're like the stupid kid or you stay outside of the school and you're the cool kid. And of course, like what there's like, I mean, most people that is like a no brainer choice. It's like, what do you want to be with people who speak badly to you? Don't really like you, don't see anything in you. Or do you want to be with the people who think you're super cool? Mm -hmm. And for my case, the people who thought I was super cool was the people who were stealing drugs outside of the school who were sitting in the street. Exactly. So they were, of course, the people I was hanging out with. And um, I was taught from like a very young age, from like 12, which is when we really started, like just like small stuff, like breaking into offices, stealing things. Obviously the small ones would always be the one who runs ahead because nobody would suspect that <laughs> a 12 year old coming in to take a laptop in, <laughs> in a backpack and running out of your office. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so uh, we were always doing all of that crazy stuff. And um, like around 16, I had already been out of school for a few years. And they were just like dealing drugs on the streets, basically. Do you remember any particular moment? You've, you've talked about the darkness, like two yes, or three yes, yes, yes. where you're like, your soul told you, okay, now I want out. This is too much. Yeah, I was actually sharing a story a few days ago. It was just fun because um, like anyone who knows me, and has ever known me known no matter where I have been if it's been like in my white clothes I'm always really like I always really uh, think about how I look it's a big thing for me some people could call it narcissistic or whatever but it is a thing for me like beauty is a thing for me I was always attracted to beauty to gold to like appearance to the not necessarily to branded clothes but like to clothes that was nice mm -hmm. and there was one morning where I woke up in a flat And uh, I was with uh, some of my brothers at the time. We had been partying, like we were partying all the time, basically. And I woke up in this sofa and I remember I sat up 
and it was like a crack house, right? Like a junky crack house. And I stood up and I looked at my homies who were like in all their nice designer clothes, completely fucked. Just like uh, in these like dirty mattresses and like semi broken sofas, like disgusting, right? And I remember I stood there and I had that feeling of like, I never, ever, ever, ever want to be here again. And that was actually the first step for me to start going out. Was like that feeling of like, fuck, it's so disgusting. Like you had people who were injecting themselves. It was like, it was a crack house, right? Mm -hmm. And that feeling of like, whoa. So I'm always making a joke with it that like my obsession with beauty (laughs) kind of helped me out, you know, because it was like, wow, I don't want to be associated with that. And then of course there was times where like people got really hurt, right? And um, and of course that is always, and I think for anyone, no matter how tough people try to play when you are, because you have to also keep a certain facade in that game, but there's always that feeling inside of like, fuck, I actually hurt another person's soul, right? Like I did hurt someone. Like Is there some, human was being. there something that you did that was maybe nagging you for a long time? Many things, mm-hmm. many, many, many things. Beating up people, beating up girls, beating up guys, like all kind of stuff. Of course, there was to say it how it is. Like that was my main motivation to do the work in the prisons in the first time. How I do you w- once you're out of this game? And you start to connect with yourself again, because when you're full on in the crimes and you're taking drugs, you're disconnected. Disconnected, for sure. When you start to connect and you start to have flashbacks of horrible things you have done yourself, how do you make amends or how do you think, okay, what can I do to... Some of the things you can never, like some of the people I can never go and speak to. Mm -hmm. Um, Why? Because it's like... It would do more damage for me to go and meet them than not. True. But once you go into that unconditional love, it's like, oh, I really love myself so I can love you also for who you are and accept you. And the interesting thing is to start to realize where you think other people are rejecting your shadows. But when you look at it really deeply, no, I'm rejecting myself. Yes. I'm rejecting myself here. And the most recent thing for me is I've done a lot of work on myself. When I see a behavior pattern where I cannot say, yeah, I used to do this. I'm like, no, I did it yesterday. (laughs) And I'm like, there's such a big part of me that's like, I'm rejecting myself so harshly. (laughs) But then you see, okay, that's why this behavioral pattern is continuing. Because I still haven't said, okay, Sylvia, not the best news, but this is still a part of you. <laughs> still the news. What are we going to do about it? But the first thing is to accept it. Of course. If you don't accept it, yeah, yeah. Then it's going to no persist. Change. Exactly. Whatever you resist, persist. Exactly. So I think we are at a time now where a lot of people are, are starting to become interested in shadow work. And and the, the shadows and shame go hand in hand. The shadows sure. that you haven't looked into are, are the things that you carry shame about. Uh, I would say for a lot of people in Iceland, it's about sex. Oh, not for sure. For guys, it's about uh, pornography, things that you haven't been proud of when you're horny or whatever. And for women, it's about... I slept with someone, I shouldn't have done it. And they are slut shaming themselves also. Yeah, yeah of it's course. It's not about always other people slut shaming. No, 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 no. It's uh, the whole spectrum. Do you think that's, uh, this is another theory that's coming out of my ass. It might be wrong. <laughs> when we are here in the, next to the North Pole, we are always fully clothed. It's dark. <laughs> the weather is bad. I've been in Colombia. Yes. Tanzania, like we have half naked there, people walking there, around. There <laughs> isn't the same shame about sex, no. except for there's when there's a lot of religion. Right. Like for example, now in Zanzibar, there's a lot of Muslim people, and they still ca- carry very traditional. They are uh, very religious, but in Latin America, for example, there is no shame around sex usually. Like what the hell? But that is what happened, right? I think like one is like the, the most fucked up things so, so to say it how it is like about religion is like, okay, we make war the holy act, like holy war becomes a thing and then sex become unholy. 
And it's like, it's all twisted. Like it's all messed up. It's like sex is the holy act. Like that is the most holy interaction we can have. It's like literally where we are birthed from that act, right? And then war should be like the unholy act, if we could say. Like that should be the one that we avoid, right? But then the majority of all the religious communities is a great topic also to get unpopular <laughs> on. But like the majority of the religious communities, they are looking at war as like, that is the thing to do. Like, yeah, we should be in war. We should have holy war to defend our God, to defend our religion. But it should be the other way around, right? Like sex should be the holy act. It should be like, that should be the act that we honor the most. And pornography is fucked up, of course, especially if you don't know that it's not real. Like I, can, I watch porn sometimes. Of course I do. But I don't see it as like, oh, that is like the reality. Like that's how no. my reality is going to be. It's like I can watch an action movie also of someone who jumps out and runs down a, a building. I'm not going to try to do that either unless I was <laughs> really invited maybe to do that. But I'm not going to try to repel down Mission Impossible and shoot through a window either. I can, <laughs> I can see that that is like, that is a great movie. Yeah. It's entertainment. Um, so I think that is what it has to change. Like you say, it's like we change into the holiness of the act. And then it doesn't matter if you have had sex with one person or a thousand people, if you do it consciously, like if it is a conscious connection. And I hope we can teach more about that to, to both uh, men and to women and, and to people like that is, and it is a, a holy union, unification of two souls that is coming together. And it can be everything. Like it can be rough, it can be soft, it can be bondage, it could be anything as long as there is consent and exactly. connection. I don't want to be with a woman that I don't feel a strong connection to or a guy. I've only, be, I've only been with one guy, but like I wouldn't be with someone where I don't You've been feel with like a guy? A, yeah, I've been uh, really? like a... <laughs> <laughs> Tiny bit. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 my friend, like you're you're talking about drugs, crimes, and now this, like you're a rock star. <laughs> it's a really, really beautiful place where you realize something that was really difficult for you, something that was really horrible, something that you maybe at for long periods you wished wouldn't have happened, becomes a strength. When Comes I wrote my strongest. book about my burnout, mm -hmm. and someone was coming and talking to me, I could say like, okay. I can tell you which medicine the doctor is going to prescribe you next. Right. I can tell you what that's going to be for you in the next six months. I right. can tell you which medicine he is going to prescribe to you. And then I'm like, ah, the period that I hated, that was the worst period of my life, has become something that I can help other people with. Right. And that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing when Incredible. you realize, okay, something that you didn't want people to know, something you didn't want to happen. And then you're like, ah, this... I can now see this is a blessing. There so was something beautiful. great about yeah, So this. beautiful. Yeah. And that is like, when, when you asked also about like crime and hurting people, it's like when you can, when you can transform that darkness into like, oh, I can actually use it for something constructive mm -hmm. in society. So like, what could I use my story for? I could share it with the young people, right? That was where I began. Like my journey began, sure, I did my breath work and stuff on the side. And then I did talks for schools where I went in and I said to them, listen, it's not fucking cool to be a gangster. It's nothing cool about it, dude. You might think it looks great and it looks beautiful and it looks glamorous and you have the big car, but there is nothing cool in holding your dead friend or losing your wife or like, you know, all of these things that you have to go through. There's nothing mm -hmm. cool about it. And you could say it with authority, right? Just like you can speak with authority on the subject of burnout because it's like we went through it, we did it. We cleared it, we transformed it, and we utilized it. Right? And when people are trying to maybe, I wouldn't say like it's a too strong de-platform or people that have a bad past, they should, okay, let's say there are young people who are on the way to the same path as you went. Mm -hmm. The people they are going to listen to are people like you. Of course. Because you understand them. And they are, they are like, oh, okay, this guy, finally someone who understands me here. Right. So, so... The people that have gone through horrible things and are willing to, and have healed themselves and are willing to help, they are really important in our society. Of course. So important. It's like, yeah, you said it. It's like this whole thing of like cancellation and deplatforming. And it's like, it's such a childish move also, right? Because it's like, okay, we're just going to like push everyone out. And then like, this is our thing again. And that's like exactly what we see in mainstream media already. Yeah. Like then it's like this one information source, one reality that is coming in and it's like, no, why not have all the different realities? 
Þessi þáttur er áskriftaþáttur. Inni á Sölvi Tryggvapunktris fá áskrifundur aðgengi að öllum útgefnum þáttum, aukaefni og nýjum þætti í hverri viku.